In today's episode, come along with me and my family as we start working on the makeover for our formal living room. We're trying to make this room into a cozy living space that we all love to spend time together. We have four children and their age range goes from 1 to 13. So we have a lot of different types of activities that we have to accommodate for. The most important thing is that we all feel comfortable in this room just like we do with any other room in the rest of the house. For me, my home decor is ever evolving. I'm constantly moving things around and changing my decor as I feel inspiration. So I'm sure that this is just the first of many different things I'm going to do in this room. And I can't wait to take you along today to show you just how I started this journey in this room. Before we get started on the makeover, I want to introduce today's sponsor, which is Homery. They are an online furniture and home decor store, and they offer tons and tons of selection. And I'll talk more about them later on in the video when I introduce the piece that I got from them. But let's get started on the room makeover. The first thing that I needed to do was move everything away from the walls so that I could put my new paint color up on the walls. You may recognize this clip from my last video. I gave you a sneak peek on what we were starting with in this room. I had to work with the wallpaper in the entryway and the colors and decor in the formal dining room that's attached. I had already started working on some other pieces, but I needed to get all that stuff moved out of the way so that I can do some repairs and get started on the painting. The dream box that you see here on the right in my sewing station went upstairs to a bedroom that I'm now using for my craft room that I did off camera with my husband. The dream box weighs a lot so it was difficult for us to get it up the stairs with just the two of us but we did it <laughs> and I'm so glad that we were able to do that together. I am thinking of doing a craft room update video showing you what my craft room looks like upstairs now so let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. That chair that you just saw is not going to be in the room makeover. I actually uh, bought it at an estate sale thinking that it would be perfect for the room but when I got it home it was more of a jewel tone teal colored blue and that would not have gone well with the gray tone blues but here you see where the baseboard has a big old crack where the caulking was when we bought this house they had repainted I don't know how long ago but you can tell they professionally painted it and with humidity and hot and cold this stuff just happens you have to do your caulking over again every few years if you want to make sure you don't have any cracks. And so I had no problem getting my hands dirty, literally, <laughs> reapplying caulking to all the baseboards and all the moldings as well. The paint color that I chose was a color by Claire Paint and it is called Classic. Obviously I picked it because it's classic and timeless. They also have another color called Timeless. No, I'm not sponsored on this video. This is paint that I already had from them from my previous home and I thought it would be perfect. It would tie so well into the wallpaper I have in the entryway and be neutral enough to not compete with the dining room. I feel like it also pulls that beige color from the china cabinet you can see in the bottom left of this picture right here and uh, kind of relates the two rooms together. Earlier I had told you in another video that I was doing a bit of the inverse colors um, from the dining room into the formal living room and what I mean by that is the colors that um, were not used a whole lot in that room will be used a whole lot in this room and that bold green color will be used much less in this room so they'll still relate but they're not going to be the same.
In my dining room makeover video, I talked a little bit about how my brain can be a bit scattered and that I have a really hard time staying on task when I'm doing something, especially if I'm really excited about it because I want to see the end results really quickly. So before I would tend to do a little bit of the edging and then start rolling and then kind of get all discombobulated between edging and rolling, edging and rolling. And other times before that, before I started doing it that way, I would roll first so that I can see the big difference right away and then do the edging afterwards. And now I will never do it that way again after finally finding the discipline within my brain to edge first and then roll. I cut my painting time down by like three quarters. I would say that I am I do this 75% faster than I did before with my discombobulated painting. I painted this entire room by myself. Granted there are a lot of big windows and big door openings, but I painted this entire room by myself in less than 2 hours. And the amount of paint that I used was less than uh less than a half of gallon. So I still have more than half a gallon of paint of this color and I'm kind of considering painting the stairwell wall this color too. Right now it is a darker beige color and I'm thinking that this brighter one might look a little bit better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Should I use this exact same color on the other side of the stairs there on that beige wall? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> it's very hard to decide these things. I guess it's just paint and I can always paint it again another day but painting a stairwell is really hard and I don't want to have to do that twice.
Once we get the roller out, it goes by so fast. I want to know in the comments section down below, do you guys enjoy watching me paint the whole room or do you find it kind of boring? When I watch it, I feel like it's really relaxing and I like seeing the progress of a room get done really quickly. It's kind of motivating in a way to me to see somebody else up and doing it and getting it done. And so I feel like I might hopefully inspire others to get up and start painting as well maybe even while this video is on <laughs> if you're like me and you just get a wild hair and have to get up and do something but let me know in the comment section down below if you do like watching me paint an entire room or if you would rather just see a super sped up and um, cut up version of it that's much shorter There is something so satisfying about putting the light switches and plug covers back on the wall after painting. But now it is time to show you parts of the furniture that I'm putting back into this room. The first thing is this couch that I got from Homery. They sent me this couch as part of a collab with them. I picked it out and I picked out a blue couch. <laughs> the reason I picked this blue is because the color matches exactly my curtains in both this room and my formal dining room and it pulls out into this marvelous guest bed. I love that it's leather because I do have a lot of younger um, nieces and nephews that may come and stay so if they were to spill things or get it wet in any way if you know what I mean it would be an easy cleanup. I'll have this couch linked down below in the description box as well as the website and they're going to give you guys an 8% discount if you use the code DIY8 which I'll also have linked down below. I want to show you how easy it is to turn this couch into a bed and then back into a couch again. <laughs> 
something else that I thought was really neat and one of the decision factors for me getting it was it had storage underneath where I can store blankets for my guests or whatever toys or extra holiday decor. You guys know I have a lot of extra decor. <laughs> no shortage of decor here. So I loved that it had storage in there and it wasn't necessarily storage you have to see. And I thought that was really neat. It also comes in three other colors, which is a dark charcoal color gray, a beige tan color, and then a light gray as well. They have some side tables that I've been eyeing as well that are caned. Cane furniture is so in right now. And I was thinking of getting some cane side tables to go on either side of this couch. But I'm going to decorate it a little more shabby chic. Uh, right now it may look modern compared to the rest of my decor, but it definitely will fit in as soon as I add all of my accessories to it. The pillows were Clearance Laura Ashley from TJ Maxx, and these are also the pillows that came with the couch, which I thought were awesome. Then the blanket that's on the back is also from TJ Maxx, and I have a lot of ideas for different pillow covers that I can do as the seasons change. But now it's time to bring in a little more furniture into this room. This bookshelf has a matching twin to it, and they were both my grandmother's bookshelves in her library room. My grandmother passed away when she was in her 90s, and she came from a time that there was no internet, of course. I mean, so did I. But she looked everything up in her encyclopedia set that she's had, I don't know, I think maybe since the 60s? But that encyclopedia set <laughs> was full of tons of information and she would find things out faster than I would sometimes looking through her library, looking something up, especially if it was something medical. If I had a medical question, I would always call her and she would find it in her encyclopedia set. And whenever I look at these bookshelves, I just picture her and all of the books that she had. She was an English major in college. She went to college in California and so writing and reading was so important to her and when we were growing up she was very hard on us about having proper English and we were never allowed to say yeah we always had to say yes so if we ever said yeah she would say <clears throat> yes <laughs> we had to say yes and I think that those little things mean so much to me now that she has passed on but I have a lot of different pieces of furniture that were hers in my home and even though these may seem a little bit out of place um, since they're such a dark wood furniture everything else is so light in the room the sentimental value they hold is way more important than having everything be matchy matchy the decor i'm filling it with is stuff that i've had in my house and i just had it in a closet or <laughs> had it in a different room or i may have thrifted it recently <laughs> I have a lot of thrifted stuff that I have not showed you guys yet. I can't wait. I'm going to do huge uh, thrift haul videos. I actually bought lots of random th stuff in boxes from an online auction and I haven't even gone through them yet because I'm waiting to go through them until I can record it for a video for you guys. I think it's going to be really entertaining because I know there's going to be some really neat stuff in there and some probably weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> who even knows what's in there one of them had like a lot of Christmas stuff and then the other one had a bunch of dishes like glassware and it has some art in there that I haven't even looked at yet I'm waiting till I record it for you guys so let me know in the comments section down below if you're interested in that but this little teapot and its matching coffee pot uh, both were in one of those halls they were on the top so I just took them out those are, <laughs> I cheated a little bit and took those out, but I'm still showing you right now. You can't really tell because my ring light is so bright, but it says made in England on the bottom and it's ironstone, which I think is really neat. And I love that they're the matching set and I love that twirly pattern that it has on it. And it's uh, mirror imaging the other side with the other two pots that I have over there. There's some of my grandmother's books there on the bottom. I do plan to add more decor to those shelves later as well. But let's get started on the coffee table that's gonna go in this room. This coffee table was sentimental, but not for me personally. I got it from somebody who, um, unfortunately, their grandfather passed away and they were emptying his place and they were going to send this to Goodwill and I said, please let me take it off your hands. I would love to make it over and uh, allow it to be a part of my family's memories like it was of theirs. The first thing we did was take some marble tiles and use a hammer to bust it apart to create mosaic pieces. 
It's just a regular tile that we bought from Floor & Decor. This is a very cheap way to get a marble tabletop. If you were to buy a piece of marble that was as big as a tabletop, you'd spend a bunch of money, whereas this was like $10 to do the whole tabletop. <laughs> My kids were very excited to get to smash these tiles. Obviously, be very careful that they're not going too crazy because pieces can kind of fly out. You don't want to get something in your eye. But I thought I'd recommend this as a fun project if you have grandkids that are old enough to partake in it. This would be a great project for you to do with your grandkids or your kids. I used this uh, glue. It's just tile adhesive. And we <laughs> used plastic spoons. And we all took part in this. So all four of my kids and I did this together which I thought was really fun and about halfway through the littler ones lost steam and interest in it and then about three quarters of the way through my older girls lost steam and lost interest but we went through it all got it done together even though the end was kind of hard to keep going <laughs> this is very very sped up the whole process took with me having to wrangle the little ones the whole time it took about a half a day to do the tile gluing part and then putting on the grout took the rest of the half of the day just because of wait times you have to wait for things to dry enough and that but we all had a pretty good time my son loves to help so you see him in my videos all the time I don't like to show my kids faces in my YouTube videos but you'll see them kind of in the background here and there especially my son I got some unsanded grout to grout in between the tile pieces and I just used a, a plastic trowel to apply it. Once the tile was set and the grout was firm enough, I brought the table over to paint it. I'm using Waverly chalk paint. I think this color is called sandstone. I wanted to try a few different things on here and I just experimented as I was going. I wanted to create a bit of a distressed driftwood look in a way. And when I started working on it, I thought it looked really great. I was loving it. It was really exactly what I wanted, <laughs> but once it dried and then I looked at it next to the couch and next to the bookshelves and just in the room in general, I thought, okay, this looks beautiful, but it doesn't really go with what I'm doing in the room. So eventually, once I was finished, I will show you how it looks um, after each stage, but I went from this sandstone color um, sort of driftwood finish to a more whitewashed shabby chic look in the end and you'll see all that process right now.
Once the clear coat was dry, I could put it in place right in front of my new couch, and it looks beautiful. It has such a regal but also fun and useful look to it. It's shabby chic, it's a little bit French in that shape, <laughs> and it's very me. One thing I would recommend though that I didn't do that I wish I had was apply some shellac because you can see some discoloration in some of the marble from the wood. Um, I guess it came through the adhesive and into the marble. I'm hoping it doesn't discolor it any further than just where it's at right now. But if you're going to do this, definitely seal your wood first. Now it's time to decorate this table and I can't decide how I want to decorate it. Should I put coffee table books like these on here? They're very inspiring books to me and I do read them quite often. So it would be nice to have them out on the table. Um, and maybe stack on a cute little amethyst <laughs> tea light holder or should I take the centerpiece from my dining table and put it here I think this pulls the wood tone from the cabinets or the bookshelves there really well and brings in the blues and the greens and everything all together at once but I can't decide exactly how I want to decorate that coffee table so I would really appreciate some suggestions here and I know that uh, the bookshelves will definitely be redecorated a million different ways and I will probably be adding a lot of decor to it in my next video for you. I am going to focus my next video on the other side of the room since this side of the room is pretty much done. But I also want to ask you, should I put side tables in front of the bookshelves, kind of like layering furniture? Um, a book like right in front of the bookshelf have a side table there and then over there have another side table or should I just leave it open to the bookshelves I can't really decide help me decide in the comments below thank you so much for watching if you liked what you saw today don't forget to hit subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my next video for my living room makeover